Hello there. Welcome to Tech Talk Weekly. I'm Bob from Creation Station. This is our weekly show where we talk about two to three interesting, cool tech stories in the news, hit you with something fun from the library and get you on your way in only 15 to 20 minutes a day. If you've ever got any tech stories you want to forward to us, remember creationstation at Broward.org. This week, I've got Tim Bain from the Miramar Library with me. How are you doing, Sir Tim? Good, good. Thank you, Bob. How are you? Thanks for having me. Life is great. How how have things been out there at Miramar? Good. We're getting we're getting busier each day. We go by it gets gets busier and busier. More. Yeah, I, I I said something about that at Maine yesterday. I was like, huh? It feels like we've actually got customers. Like this feels like an almost normal day again. So yeah, some of the branches are really picking up. Yeah, which is good. Yeah. No, we need it and we want it. Got to make sure everybody's happy. Absolutely. I'm going to bring up our slides right now because we've got some fun stories to talk about here. And this first one is all about 24,000 year old zombies. <laughs> um, so, what happened is they've been, this is the second oldest creature that they've pulled out. Um, and these are kind of like tardigrades. Everybody's heard of tardigrades probably because they're a little microscopic thing that moves around That's, and does, and they look kind of cool. It's a water bear. They call, also call it a water bear, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. See, these yeah. guys, these rotifers, they don't have the same press people. They, they did not get right. good story. They didn't get good names. They didn't get anything. And yeah, they're not quite so photogenic. But... True, true. Um, for 24,000 years old, and here's that same one right there feeding and being able to split. And because these guys are, uh, they don't need, um, they're, they're asexual, so they can reproduce on their own. I think, I think that's the right word. I'd have to double check myself here. Um, I just found this a really interesting story, Tim. Yeah, incredibly fascinating. Um, it always amazes me, A, that scientists can figure out how old like a rock or a fossil, or in this case, a, an actual microscopic organism, you know, how they can figure it out that it's 24,000 years old. And then to bring it back to life, um, that was like some Frankenstein level stuff there. Yeah. And I, one of the really interesting things that I found about the story was these things don't get ice crystals inside of them. Unlike almost I, every other type of creature out there they've got right. some special gel in them that prevents mm -hmm. ice crystals from forming which is what you know the famous story of walt disney you know freezing his head to come back we, we all know it's not even if they right. did that it's not going to work because yeah. ice crystals form and it shatters all your cells so right. somehow if this thing can survive all that maybe there's hope for us yeah, yeah. Or they mentioned, you know, uh, techniques to store cells and organs and tissues, you know, maybe you, yeah. you got to get out before you can run. So maybe they could, if they can figure that out, then yeah, maybe we can freeze. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be frozen anytime soon. Yeah. Unless, no. unless I move to, unless I go to Canada, that might be, that's for some of our attendees that are out there. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I guess the idea uh, is uh, science fiction was is to be able to freeze people so they can travel long distances in space, I guess. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the thing. If you can put somebody in like that suspended animation to uh, keep them going, uh, it, it's a it's a really different type of consideration, which leads we're going to get back to that, too, um, with that whole long term thing right here with our second story of uh, uh -huh. Gizmodo put out a really interesting just questions to the experts this week. On could humans live under the sea? We will not break into Disney songs because we don't want to violate copyright. But um, they had some interesting talk about how different it is from building a spaceship, from building a submarine, and the fact that essentially the US and Soviet, the old Soviet, current Russian uh, nuclear submarines are about the only things that are truly self sufficient. Um, Everything else out there, you need to bring your power, your food, these various habitats that they've built to uh, come down. You've got to bring it all in with you and keep resupplying. You can't just keep it there. Right, right. Um, so is, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting, I guess he po they pose it as a thought experiment. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it would be a, a, a big technological challenge but um 
I think I agree more with the the female, uh, the lady um, oceanographer at the end there, where she mentions that the, uh, you know, that we need to treat the oceans as the precious, irreplaceable resource that they are. I, I, I yeah. love to see them in snorkel and see all the, see the the creatures down there. And um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to see them protected. Yeah, I, I mean, um, it, it sounds neat, but I, I'm not sure we need to uh, have, you know, large cities in the ocean. I understand it works great for training astronauts and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a link for that Aquarius reef base. And I think you're right. I think that part of the thing is where do we draw the line from using technology like this as habitation to build? I mean, with sea level rise, I mean, how much of Miami or, or Broward, et cetera, are we going to have to re-engineer? And are those things things we can take out of this kind of, you know, idea and or some of the other things they mentioned about how pressure is just such a different science than right. building the space station. Right. You know, right. Apollo was like a tin can compared to these things because you just need so much, so much better structural to withstand all of that. Right, right. And you mentioned the um, astronauts training. Here's one of those places, the Aquarius Reef Base. And all three of these are right off the, the um, Florida Keys here. There's three different places in the world right now where people are doing this kind of research of living under sea and doing this. And uh, Florida International University took over in 2014 from NASA to run Aquarius, which is the one that's right off of Key Largo. And there's two more farther down in the keys there also. So yeah, it's it's an interesting idea, I think, of you know, where do you spend your resources um to learn better how to do outer space? Or do we do under the oceans? Or like you said, just take better care of the freaking planet, people. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. I, I I worry a little bit about, uh, you know, de developing, uh, going into the ocean to start to develop things. Um, but um, it, yeah, it is a, it's it's an interesting question. And I remember reading about the, uh, I think there used to be something down in the Keys where you could actually stay, right? I mean. Yeah, it's yeah. still there. They have a little hotel there. It's only got like four rooms, like two rooms okay. or four rooms. It can, I think it has two rooms. It can hold four people. And you can like stay overnight or something like that. Yeah, I think that would be cool. I'd like to experience that. So yeah, I think in a small scale, but I, I don't think I'd like to see large scale uh, human development. Yeah. Uh, that sort of thing. You said you go you, you go snorkeling and scuba diving. Yeah, I love to love to snorkel. I, I don't I never got certified to scuba, but I, I do love to snorkel. And my wife goes down to the Caribbean as part of her work, and I whenever I go down there with her, I I love to get out and. And snorkel the reefs and see the creatures out there. It's, it's that really is cool. awesome. That is uh, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Um, we did that. We went to. We got a chance to go see the Great Barrier Reef in Australia about oh, fifteen years ago. Um, wow. So yeah, it was a lot of. Unfortunately, we got there just after a storm, so everything it was super cloudy water and all the stuff like that. So we didn't get quite of uh, the gorgeous views that you see in film sometimes. But it was still really cool to compare and see how alike it is to south florida uh that that section of australia up there near darwin and everything and uh it was just really amazing it was so much fun yeah i'd like to see that someday and this is the picture of what you were talking about sir about the habitat underneath of going in and staying and doing if you if you're scuba certified this is where you can go stay yeah that's cool that's off key largo right yeah right off of key largo yeah that's cool and our last story for the day is another one of those very different new world, new way of doing things. Um, so this is in Japan, and they have created a brand new healthcare robot to basically take care of older people. It's a thing, um, you know, just like the United States, Japan has a huge problem with healthcare um, and a aging population. So this is one of the things they have been looking at to do. Um, Sophia, and here's a picture of uh, the side picture of her there as they're building the robots. Um, Sophia has been uh, a semi-famous robot who's out there. She can, she's got a little bit of artificial intelligence, deep learning stuff, not 
real, you know, artificial general intelligence, but she can respond in a conversational way and stuff. Um, and now they're building Grace, which is going to handle taking care of, and I'll throw up some of these pictures here, being able to do uh, healthcare, interacting with people, answering questions, asking questions, being able to watch and see and do. What do you think, Tim? Do you want to be on? Do you want to? Uh... Well, I, I hadn't seen this. I hadn't, I, you know, I'd seen like the robots from Boston Dynamics that look kind of like mm -hmm. that are kind of dog like or the ones that can kind of pick up things, but they look very much like robots, of course. I hadn't seen like these more human type. And I was really uh, amazed at the uh, the facial kind of movements that they were able to. Oh, did you notice the little Albert Einstein in the background? Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. But yeah, really amazed with their um, their facial expressions. Um, and it seemed like they not only was it, you know, just sort of a communication, but it seemed like they could do some basic, um, you know, uh, like re recording. Uh, biological data from patients. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. and especially the hands and stuff like that, they can actually use uh, temperature sensors and things to be able to track um, and thermal, you know, uh, blah, 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 blah. thermal thermometer, you know, okay. just like we've been using right. for COVID and all those sorts of things, they can do that. And by being able to interact and then bring in an expert uh, remotely to uh, talk through their this person's, uh, you know, face, to uh, get information from a patient if need be and stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah. Was, uh -huh. yeah, and the, uh, and I thought too, you know, with the pandemic, you know, um, people, you know, in hospitals that are, you know, in highly contagious type sort of uh, uh, states, you know, that it's another way to, to get some, some interaction with the patients, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and we and, talked about it a few weeks ago about how the uh, another uh, university, uh, Stanford, uh, here in the U.S., developed some skin that uh, can be used at so that it feels more like uh, human skin. Okay. Uh, meaning it feels so that it can hold things better uh, than <laughs> without like crushing the can or stuff like that. It's got a better tensile strength to it. They can actually right. detect how strong it's holding it. Yeah, and then when you see them peel off the face like this, it's kind of like, huh? Okay, then. Hmm. Yeah. Did you think of Blade Runner when you when I I thought? Oh of Blade yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. When you get the androids like this, yeah. Right, right. But sometimes I think this is the future of uh, deep space travel. Though we'll be sending like uh, artificially intelligent robots yeah. out yeah. into space, to S space sending space. our own little physical avatars out out right. there to uh, deal with the dangers while we control them from from a distance. Yeah, exactly. Or, yeah, and we're going to see what happens with that. Well, I want to make sure that we uh, plug uh, the summer at your library, broward.org slash library slash summer. It's the beginning of the summer learning season. Make sure you register. Make sure you get on Beanstack. Get your read. Everything you read, everything you listen to, you win prizes. We just had a prize drawing uh, yesterday, I think it was, or earlier this week. Uh, we did one. We're going to have another one coming up here in at near the end of June, early July. So please hit us up and register for summer learning and pay attention to all that. And you've got a cool program part of summer learning going on out there too, Tim, don't you? This Sassy and Orly. Uh, yeah, this this Saturday we're gonna have a, it's a live action uh, clown show, the Sassy and Orly clown show. It's it's of course virtual and online and free, and uh, there is the um, the uh, the site where you can you can register there. Yeah, it's gonna be tomorrow, uh, this Saturday at eleven a.m. So anybody yeah. can out there can register and go do those things, come mm -hmm. and see us and do that. And that was courtesy of the Broward uh, Public Library Foundation. That's excellent. That's yeah. And Tim, you, what's your cool library thing that you got for us? Well, I did want to put a plug in for uh, the My Digital Summer uh, Library program, which was it came to us via uh, Rosalind Dean from in Community Engagement, and it allows eligible students in kindergarten through third grade to be able to check out um, some iPads uh, from the library, and the iPads come preloaded with. Um, some educational software and access to ebooks and some cool programs. Um, and we do have five of the devices here at the Miramar Library. Now we're not listed as one of the locations because I think we were added at, at sort of at the, at the uh, end of the process. But you can see the other um, 
five libraries that that are listed on there or is it six yeah and that's that's six. it's it's a really cool program and especially because it's all cell data so you don't have to worry about internet at home for these kids they can just get on and automatically use it and keep it and keep running with it oh that's a great point i'm i'm, I'm glad you said that bob now they do uh it is um it, it is a federally funded grant so they were trying to target certain neighborhoods so the kids do need to to reside in one of the six uh, zip codes that they've uh, specified or attend one of the uh, elementary schools in that area and they can just call but, up the miramar uh, library and and you guys will give them all the information for how to get in touch with it and make it happen or if not the sure. the other libraries just i'll read them out loud for for everybody there's the jan moran uh -huh. collier city library lauderdale lakes lauder hill town center Lauder Hill Central Park, that's where the Cricket Stadium is, if you're down here, uh, Carver Ranches, and the Tyrone Bryant branch, and the Miramar branch. So grab one, grab your favorite librarian from any of those locations, and they'll help you get started on this program. If you've got a, a child in your family that needs help with this, come on into the library and get, grab a device. Absolutely, yeah. And, and just like everything, it's always free at the library. That's right. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here today, Sir Tim. It was a lot of fun being able to, to get different people on here and get some different uh, new ideas and thoughts out here. Well, I appreciate you having me. Thank you so much, Bob. I appreciate what you do. Oh, we just we just have fun. This that's I I get away with all sorts of cool stuff. I just have a fun little bit out here. Um, and how's the Miramar Library? Is the school upstairs open now too? Uh, we have Broward College and Nova upstairs and um uh they 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 are having online classes right now i don't think the uh, students have have come back okay uh, but yeah they 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 share the building with us um and i just if i can mention too bob we are of starting our, our summer break spot uh food delivery and our ours will be starting next tuesday the 15th at uh 10 45. so and Excellent. i know there, there's uh, other library locations around there that also participate but at, here at Miramar, we are we do it on Tuesdays at ten forty five. Our first Tuesday will be uh, next week on the fifteenth. Yeah, it's, yeah. See, you guys are all libraries are busy, but you guys are just heaping it on out there. Yeah, yeah, we got we got got stuff going on and other programs <laughs> coming up. So uh, thanks for giving us a chance to uh, try to put a plug in for them. So oh, thanks, I'm glad to glad to glad to have you guys on. It's always wonderful. Well, that's our show for the week. Um, again, if you have any cool stories that you want to let us know, creationstation at Broward.org. Or if there's you have a favorite library or librarian that you want to see featured on one of our upcoming episodes, send us an email and we'll be glad to have you on. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe and we'll see you next week.